Welcome back to your Tesla Scale Modular, I'm Lee. Today we're going to do a review of uh, this here. This is a Star Wars Bandai kit, the Death Trooper from Rogue One in 112 scale. Uh, now, as you know, I'm a keen lover of the Bandai kits. I really do like all their kits. I've done a few now and uh, I think they're top, top quality. They really are very good. Um, it's a shame you can't get them officially in the UK. But uh, obviously I get mine from a very good friend, Darren, at uh, the model, Tokyo Model Detective uh, website here, TMD, um, uh, who can get hold of pretty much anything from Japan and get it over to you in quick time as well. I mean, I don't get posts very quick here in uh, the Balearic Islands, uh, but Darren got me this from day release. I think it took five days to get here, which is a lot quicker than most things from uh, the UK, that's for sure. So uh, I would definitely recommend that you go and hit Darren up at, at TMD, he's got a Facebook page and a, um, a web page that you can uh, pre-order stuff and everything. If you want to get in contact with Darren, his Facebook page is the easiest one, it's a very busy page. As I say, you can get all sorts of things like Gundam, Mecca, you know, anything from Japan. That, and the good thing is he has a good premise that uh, the fact that if there's something that you can't find on the normal market, you can't find it yourself, he'll actually go out and have a hunt around the shops for you in Japan, I think it's obviously in Tokyo. Um, and uh, if you can find it, it'll, it'll do it for you. Obviously, there's a little charge for doing that, but um, it means you can get stuff that you might not be able to find uh, otherwise. So, uh, great contact to have. And if you're into a lot of the Japan anime or Mecha or Gundam or whatever, uh, really good friend to have as well. So, I want to thank Dan for, for this sample. He did send me this as a gift, a happy Christmas thing. So, uh, thanks to thanks to Darren for that. Uh, but I think uh, without further ado, let's get back. In, let's get in the box and see what's in there. Okay then, so the Star Wars Rogue One 112 Death Trooper Plastic Model Kit. Uh, great picture on the front there, absolutely fantastic. Uh, gotta love the Bandai box art and everything as well. And uh, as we look around the box, on one side we have uh, just the front views, back views and some posable positions of the Death Trooper himself. Uh, and on the other side we've got a, another stand-up version of that uh, itself. Um, box itself, usual Bandai Star Wars box, we've had one before, no, no different whatsoever. So let's have a look inside the box. Uh, now the price um, is being flashed up as we speak at the moment, and as I say, I get these from uh, the Model Detective, Tokyo Model Detective, uh, Darren, and uh, his uh, online price is showing up as we speak. Um, so uh, we've got one, uh, two, three separate bags and a uh, instruction manual, and we have one, two, three, four, three, four, five, six screws in total. So what we're going to do is we're going to open them up, um, and uh, we shall see what we have. Now, if you go look at my other Bandai reviews uh, of these kits, then these aren't going to be too dissimilar, to be honest with you. Um, mainly because uh, they're all such a good standard um, and the moulding and everything is always great. Uh, but on here we can see you've got the main body parts, we've got uh, the legs, uh, the thighs, the, the, the lower legs, ankles, um, looks like shoulder pads there, breast, uh, rear, rear plate I think that is, or maybe rear front. Uh, these two, the plates here, the main body plates, you've got, um, uh, that's probably part of the backpack I would imagine there. Um, and we've got the helmet, quite an important part. Um, you can't really see the shape of it there. A little bit of it there. Um, and that's gonna have a full face mask on it as well, which it looks like you've got half of it there. And you've got the front mouthpiece there. And I would imagine it would build up over a few of the sprues as well. But as you can see, it's one of these snap together kits. Uh, you can see all the, the fixing points here and here uh, and everything. Uh, all these, uh, I always tend to glue them as well, together as well. And with these Bandai kits, you can do one of many things. You can actually, um, you can snap them together uh, really easy. And uh, Bob's your uncle, I put a bit of glue inside the thing so you can't take them apart and that's it. Or you can go to town, uh, like with all the Bandai kits, like the Gundam and the Mecha and all that sort of stuff, you can individually spray them piece by piece as well. And the good thing is, uh, the easy thing about that, a lot of kits when you're doing stuff like that, you have to, Put it on surfaces that you know you see because um, you know that but where these most of these fixing points are in half um, you can actually put the cocktail stick on the inside um, and fix it in that way with a little bit of super glue and that which makes uh, the placing the cocktail stick and the painting a lot easier because you're not going to get that that super glue bit on the part that you're painting itself which is always very good um, I'm gonna these 
got two sprues in here. One I can see straight away is the base. Uh, and this is this is typical of all the Bandai kits. Every single one has one, um, and I actually use them as well. I think they're great to use. Um, and you've got these little section here, which is if there's something um, specific to that, like on the Star Trooper here, if you can see on this Star Trooper, uh, Stormtrooper, you can see that little bit square bit has a footprint on it. <laughs> Excuse the dust. Uh, has a footprint on there, which means you can pop his boot in, and uh, that fixes him to the base plate. Okay, like so, and you can give him a bit of a cocky start and everything. So, uh, and that gives a good anchor, uh, and that will be specific to each kit. So, uh, very nice indeed. We then got the uh, the sprue with the weaponry on there. Um, we've got the E111 blaster, E11 blaster, sorry, um, and we've got the little um, pistol, and I can't remember the name of that one. Um, oh, bugger, for the life of me, I can't remember. Anyway, it's on there. Uh, we've then got uh, parts, so we've got a magazine there, and we've got parts of the face mask here. All very good. I'll zoom you in just so you can have a look. All good detail, as you can see. Very nice indeed. And uh, there's the detail of the, the rifle, and then you've got the blaster, and then the pistol. All very nice indeed. And you've got like, things like this here, which is a little magazine and everything. Lovely, lovely way to um, present everything, and uh, as I said, uh, you can you can do what you want with these to your heart's intent. You can snap them together, and they still look good, as does the stormtrooper here. Or you can go to town and change them. Um, that is glued together, uh, but I could paint them if I wanted to. But I think I think probably what I'm going to end up doing is uh, I'm probably going to get one of each, uh, one snap together, and then one. Uh, to paint properly and things like that as a project. Uh, I'm a Star Wars nut, I absolutely love Star Wars, my son loves Star Wars. He's already said he wanted this to play with and obviously I chopped his arms off and, and put him in a cupboard and said don't you dare son um, <laughs> uh, for one of those, for the, this Death Trooper. Um, there is another kit, a Shore, Shore Trooper out which I wouldn't mind as well, hint hint Darren. Um, absolutely love the look of that trooper for sure, totally different from all the rest. Right, inside this bag we have uh, one, two, three sprues and some decals. Let's go through these sprues quickly because uh, they're not going to be too dissimilar. Uh, and you can see you've got a lot of best plates and things like that here. A lot of body works, you've got all the different hands, poseable hands for, they're, sorry they're not poseable, uh, but you've got some that, that go well with the uh, rifles and the guns and things like that. Um, and then you've got a part of a backpack or could be a sort of leg pack actually. Um, and also you've got a slightly different coloured sprue here. I like what band I do with this, they put the different colours on the same sprue so they must have some fantastic technology in their factory to do that because when you have, um, when we did this one, uh, obviously I've got R2-D2 and uh, the R5 unit as well and both all those different colours that you can see on there, I'll show you on the overhead, all those different colours that you can see on there uh, were all on the same sprues. Um, so they had, you know, and they were all, the positions were interlocked as they were on here. And you see, just put this little bit here. So very clever to do, very good. And I'm sure it saves them a bit of money doing it that way as well in the long run, because it's less sprues that they have to have. Uh, we then got another sprue here, and this is, uh, looks like shoulder pads, arm pads. Um, uh, looks like part of a cloak cover, I would imagine, the shoulder covers. Bottom of the feet, I love this, if you can see the bottom of the feet there, I'll just, I'll, I'll just zoom you in a bit so you can have a look. But uh, on the bottom of the feet, they've actually got a tread. Uh, now, if I remember rightly, this Stormtrooper didn't have that. No, there's just flat plastic uh, on there. But this is the one that's actually got a tread, so that's a really nice little touch. I do like that. Um, and then you've got the arm pads, and obviously it's got all this little, um, all this little bit of detail and stuff like that. And there we go, there's the foot, foot thing for that securing pad. Uh, some more hands there, obviously not clutching anything and they have the, the little covers over the top of them and everything. So all very nice indeed. Um, I've got to say, uh, I, I know I could build this and put this together in a night and I may just do that before I move house. As you know, I'm moving house very soon and literally I'm doing this and another review and then I'm ripping down my, my, um, my whole man cave, which is going to be it's a very sad day indeed. Uh, so I might do that just before I do that, just in honour of my man cave here. Um, then you've got the, the uh, joint sprue, now this is all slightly rubberised, um, it's more rubber than plastic. And these are all the joints, it makes, uh, makes all the arms and the joints and everything poseable. Um, the locking system is reasonably good with these Bandai kits. Um, 
you know, uh, I've had a couple of uh, Gundam kits uh, where after a while, myself, I've let my son play with the Gundam kit and after a while, they have got a bit loose, I've got to say, and the, the arms don't stay in properly and I'm gonna probably have to pose it and then stick it in the next next time I use them. But um, I don't think they're, they're not for kids, they're not playable, they can't really play with them because they do these joints do wear after a time. Uh, but uh, the thing with this, the challenge with this kit mainly is going to be that it's all black. Um, and if you want to paint it, uh, there are different colours of black. They've got matte blacks and vinyl blacks and satin blacks on there as well. So there's three different types of black on there, which is nice. Uh, but if you're going to paint it, um, you could really go to town with those blacks and come up with some great paint schemes. Because black is one of the hardest things to get right, that's for sure. You have two lots of decals here, as you can see. Uh, one is uh, stickers and the other is water slide uh, decals which are like normal decals for normal models that you can put on obviously those are for when you're painting um, if you're going to paint the, the model and it's a great touch from Bandai and it's something they've done it all the, all the way along with all their um, uh, Star Wars stuff and things like that you have two sets of decals I'm uh, pretty sure that a lot of the Gundam kits are the same as well uh, so that if you are going to paint you've got some decent decals and then you've got stickers which really is all you need if you're just going to pop them together without, um, snap fit them together without doing anything drastic on it. So it's nice, so again it's another little touch and it just shows that Bandai are thinking of the modelers and the different types of modelers that are out there and, and, uh, and the way they cater to them as well, which is brilliant. Okay, so the instruction manual, uh, normal one, uh, it's this nice sort of magazine-y plastic, uh, matte colour, uh, it's not A5 and it's not A4, it's bigger, but it'd be a big fold out thing like they normally are, as that is. And uh, it would be a very easy step-by-step -step process to go through this. Um, now, obviously, it's going to be in Japanese. Uh, you've got a numbered sprue map um, on the... Uh, let's just zoom out here. So you've got a numbered sprue map. shows you how it should be once it's all built up together. And it's got this index thing which tells you what page and things like that is. Everything should be on. Uh, and as you go through, look, start with the head and things like that. And then it tells you this part builds into that and you've got to connect the arms and the legs to that to build up to that. Um, and these are new things, like this, all this check thing, this is all new, uh, I've got to say. It hasn't been on the other ones that I've seen. Um, and you can see as it goes together, it all just snap fits. It's very easy, very self-explanatory. And uh, the way they make the kits, you can't really put the wrong pieces in the wrong holes because they put them certain shapes in certain ways so that you do get the right piece in the right hole, so to speak. As you can say, uh, see all the body builds up. Uh, usually, they have a thing across the top uh, that says, uh, you know, this section and this section and this section. Obviously, that's gone now. Um, they've done this, but very easy to understand. Um, you know, very self-explanatory. I don't think there's any anyone's going to have any problems with that. My son can follow that quite easily, and he has done. Um, so, if my son can do it, all you guys can do it. I would imagine. Um, and there you go, and there is to say, put it on the base. You've also got this stand thing. Now, this stand thing here isn't included in the kit usually. Um, I haven't had it in any of the other kits. And looking at this, uh, I don't think it's in here too. So I can only assume that that's an extra thing that you can purchase from Bandai, um, you know, to stand them on whatever. Uh, I would imagine that's quite poseable as well, because you can see it's quite jointed here. But uh, it doesn't come in the kit, that's for sure. Uh, and then at the back, you've then got uh, where to put your decals uh, and everything like that, uh, as you can see. And uh, it just shows you odds and sods if you want to paint or things like that, where the little bits and bobs go. Um, and as I say, it's going to be, you've got three different types on here by the looks of it. Uh, I think, without a shadow of doubt, that has to be the one, the fully loaded one in the middle. He does look the beast of the lot. Um, so it does look like there are a couple of different versions there, which is good to see, very nice indeed. But that will be the one I'm going for, that's for sure. Um, so yes, so uh, overall, um, it's, a, it's a great kit, you know, uh, let's go back. Well there you go, that's the review for the Death Trooper 112 scale from Bandai, a very new release, literally only came out a few days ago. I absolutely love it, I can't wait to get it built up and together. As you can see here, I did this Stormtrooper a little while ago, um, and it was a good mojo breaker as well, and yeah, I had a long hiatus from uh, modelling. And the guys on um, uh, the ISM uh, birthday prize pool got me this, uh, it was one of the, the birthdays one of our birthday presents and it was great for me to do it. I did that in the uh, R2, D2 and R5 units as well which was smashing. Uh, so I can't imagine this being too different whatsoever. 
and I can't wait to get stuck into it. And I do love these Bandai Star Wars kits. Um, I will be getting them, every single one of them, uh, from Darren, of course, at TMD. Um, and I'd like to say a big thanks to Darren again for, for supplying that. So uh, I think uh, as, a, as a result on that one, I mean, as with all Bandai's, I think you're looking at a minimum of nine out of 10. Sometimes there's some issues here and there with head sizes and things like that. I know the one sixth version of the Stormtrooper has just come out and it's enormous. Um, a damage has built one and the head does look a little bit too big. Um, it is, uh, and it looks like he's shrugging a bit, but uh, it's still a great, it's going to be a massive thing to have on your desk, and I'm going to get one anyway, so, and who knows, Darren might hit me up with one, so. <laughs> but uh, uh, as you, if you want anything, any of these uh, Bandai Star Wars stuff, or anything like the vehicles, the, the people, or any Mecha Gundam or anything, go to talk, TokyoModelDetective.com, hit him up, um, and see what he can do for you. But, uh, but that is a, a great little kit, as, as they all are. And, um, so that's it, uh, until next time, take care, bye bye.